Oh, hello there, and welcome to History America presents the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance was a time of great cultural achievement, yet continued oppression for the African American population in Harlem, New York. Here at History America, we like to present both sides of history. This evening, we begin with an interview with Honorable Dr. Amazing Pants, Kelly Vafey, Ph.D., about Jacob Lawrence, possibly one of the best artists in the history of the world. It's a pleasure for you to meet with me, Dr. Honorable Fancy Pants, Kelly Vafey, Ph.D. Ms. Vafey is fine. So, tell me about this Jacob Lawrence fellow. Well, Jacob Lawrence was a very important artist during the Harlem Renaissance. He moved to Harlem, New York in the 1920s, and that was when he began studying art. He was greatly influenced by the Great Migration. What's that? Great Migration was a huge movement of almost two million African Americans from the South to the North. You don't say. Yes, in fact, Jacob Lawrence created an entire 60-piece collection devoted to this migration. One of these pieces was called And the Migrants Kept Coming. What interesting style. Yes, his style is very distinct. Jacob Lawrence all frequently um, had a very plain brown background, um, which contrasted with his very vibrant colors. He called his style dynamic cubism. So in this particular art piece um, features the great diversity of African Americans who were leaving their violence-ridden lives in the South and hoping to, for better futures. It was not to come, it was not to be, however, for what greeted them in the North was just as violent as it was in the South, as shown in this picture. Well, it was very boring to meet with you, Miss Rafey. Thank you. Mm hmm You know it. My, wasn't that an illuminating discussion? Let's continue with our look at the art of Harlem with a poem by County Cullen, read by none other than Ms. Emily Nguyen. County Cullen was born in 1903. After becoming famous during the Harlem Renaissance, Cullen claimed that he had been born in New York City. However, it is unclear where his true birthplace is. He was raised by his paternal grandmother until he was adopted by Reverend F.A. Cullen, who was a minister in Harlem. Despite his religious influence, Cullen seemed to question religion throughout his work. From a young age, Cullen was a phenomenal writer. He won his first competition in high school and later won first prize in the Witterbinner Poetry Contest in 1925 and the Amy Spingarn Award of the Crisis Magazine. However, some critics disliked the fact that his poetry reflected John Keats' romanticism and that it did not follow the rhythms and idioms of African American culture. Once riding in old Baltimore, heart filled, head filled with glee, I saw a Baltimorean keep looking straight at me. Now I was eight and very small, and he was no whit bigger. So, and so I smiled, but he poked out his tongue and called me. I saw the whole of Baltimore from May until December. Of all the things that happened there, that's all that I remember. Oh yes, peanut noir, I will have you yet. Wasn't that an interesting and noteworthy analysis of County Cullen's poetry? Let's not forget, the Harlem Renaissance wasn't just a time of depressing poetry and interesting looking works of art. It was also a time of booze and dancing and music, centered around none other than the famous Cotton Club. When I was young, Harlem especially the Cotton Club, was the place to be. I only went two or three times, but oh, it was the cat's meow. Now, looking back on it, I thought I was so brave for venturing among the colored folks, but looking back on it now, it was only a sea of white. Sure, the entertainers and servers were black, but I never saw a single colored guest. And indeed there weren't. The Cotton Club owned and operated by the white New York gangster Oni Madden, enforced a strict Jim Crow policy. The Cotton Club was opened in 1923 
and decorated to create a stylish plantation environment. The club was meant to transport its white clientele to a pre-Civil War South. The African-American performers and waiters served as exotic entertainment. The club's female dancers were chosen based on oppressive and racist criteria. They were required to be at minimum 5'6", only slightly tanned, thin, and younger than 21. Yet, during this time, Edward, Duke Ellington, composed his decade-defining big band music. born into a middle-class family and began to study piano at age seven, beginning his professional piano career at age 17. His position as band leader at the Cotton Club helped him to expand his music and prompted him to add band members, his band finally reaching a total of 14 members. Duke blended his band members' individual sounds into one cohesive and new form of jazz music. Ellington described his music as American music, rather than jazz. Each of his songs captured a different mood, from slow and sentimental to upbeat and energetic. There you have it, folks. You will now understand everything that you ever will need to know about the Harlem Renaissance. Here at History America, we can guarantee you there is not one single artist or musician or poet, or writer, or historical event that we didn't talk about. We did it all. Good night from all of us here at History America. I've got a little bunch of coconuts, coconuts, something, something standing in a row. A big one, small one, some the size of your head. Da 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 da